in position zero, I wanted to have that little pointer facing up to 12 o'clock. That's the only way I can read it comfortably. And this was original, the case, until I dropped the caliper accidentally and then the pointer faced to 9 o'clock. So I had to do something about it. Here you see the caliper disassembled already. This wasn't that easy, but I'll tell you how I did it. The pointer is pressed on a little shaft. That shaft is driven by tiny gears and that gears engage in the gear rack. And so my conclusion was the easiest way to solve my problem is to slightly move around that gear rack because this one is easily accessible from behind. This is just secured by three little screws and uh, so I tried to loosen the screws and move around that gear rack, but it didn't work. So how to open up the whole thing? First of all, you have to grab the glass body, the glass cover, and just remove it. It's just slightly pressed on. And uh, soon as you have removed the dead glass, you will reach the pointer that you also just grab and uh, slide it down from this little shaft. And then you have this white scale also that you can remove. Underneath that scale you will find three screws and uh, loosening them you can disattach here the dial body as you see here in the picture. Look what is hidden here. There is not only one gear but there are two gears. They kind of engage with each other and run synchronously. That looks interesting. And of course, now I understand, that's a special mechanics because this is there to eliminate any kind of play that we will have. These two golden colored big gears here, they are not even rigidly coupled to the small gears. In between, I can see some tiny, tiny springs. Okay, so look at this. So the little gears here, they are spring-loaded and attached to this bigger golden gears here. This is all to get rid and eliminate any kind of play. So those two gears here are spring-loaded engaged in the gear rack. That makes it interesting, but now is the question, how do I assemble the whole thing? How to spring preload the gears when assembling the whole thing? Hmm. Searching for any assembly helping holes here, but I couldn't find any. Hmm. Secondly, if the whole thing is spring-loaded, then in which direction? The answer is here. On inspecting the spring, I found that this is loaded only in one direction and I could see that. So I have to turn it here to the left and this is the way to load that spring. So that is my direction. I need to preload it. That's at least what I thought. So looking from this side, checking again. And here comes the biggest trick how to assemble the whole thing while being preloaded. I put the dial body back in place where it would be mounted and turned it a little bit clockwise. That way the left gear was engaged already within in the order gear to preload this one behind the it and spring the right somehow I here to as you see the left I could move spring and a little bit with my little toothpick here and I loaded it step by step and that worked after it was preloaded as you see here I just took care to hold the whole thing in place until the screws went back the three screws are back in to secure the dial body with the main body and this is how it looks like.
it still moves. Everything seemed to shift correctly. Let's see. Oh yeah. There is a little pre-load to feel and to see. I'm not sure how much preload those should have, but at least they have some and I hope that it works out and is precise enough for the whole mechanics here. Here to see that little slider and that will keep the outer ring here in place where we will mount the glass on. So that's later on to adjust the scale there. The rest is easy. Just put everything together again. Squeeze the caliper together so you have it on zero. Adjust the pointer as you like to straighten it up and push it back on the little shaft there. Check before that the little pointer is not scrubbing around on the scale or either on the glass body. So you need to have a little bit of air gap in between so that it works fine later on. It's of course not important to have the scale right now because you can turn around it later on. And you see, it just snaps together. As easy as that. If you are into 3D printing, you might like my customizing project here. Look at this beautiful light orange PETG spacer underneath the locker knob here. And here is how it was printed. If you are curious what kind of print bed surface I use here to print on, well, I'm pretty sure you have never heard about it because this is polyester coated sheet metal as it is used in the roofing industry worldwide. I accidentally discovered this kind of material printed on it and found it prints perfect. It is a perfect adhesion for PLA and for other stuff. In order to get this new polyester style coated sheet metal verified by more users, I was sending out about to 30 people of the German community test pieces of this sheet metal and they all tested it and uh, most of them liked it very much and they found advantages even over traditional pie sheets. This material provides you with great adhesion and is easy to clean and it almost costs nothing. For example, a big sheet like for a sidewinder that will be 300 by 300 millimeters, you can get it from your local roofing business maybe for two dollars a piece already cut to your bed size. Having that polyester material available, I even started to print cold. Just having the first layer heated up to 60, 70 degrees Celsius and then shut off the bed. And the part, the printed part will not fall from the bed because the adhesion is so nice. So I can print for hours and without having the bed even powered on. Is that great? If you wanted to see some cold printed adhesion tests, just follow the link here to my German video. Even if you don't understand my native language precisely or at all, I'm sure you will get an idea how it works and how interesting this material is.